In this video, we're going to introduce the Schrodinger equation. Now, in the previous lecture, we went through how waves are treated in classical mechanics and looked at the classical wave equation under the assumption that if uh, particles have wave-like properties, there must be a wave equation that can define its properties, right? So we looked at the, uh, way, the way waves are treated in classical mechanics, and we got down to this equation, right, where psi of x is the spatial function for the wave, uh, omega is the angular frequency, and v is the wave velocity. So what I want to do here is use this as a starting point to build up uh, Schrodinger's equation and, and motivate it uh, to motivate the underpinning of Schrodinger's equation, right? As a wave equation that includes uh, the particle like particle wave duality, right? So, um, so the first thing that I want to do here is re-express this equation a little bit. Um, and I want to re-express it so that we have the fundamental properties of the wave, the wavelength and the frequency. So we can re-express uh, omega and V, right? So re-express that angular frequency and the velocity, the wave velocity, right? So re-express omega and V so that we have them in terms of lambda and nu, our wavelength and frequency respectively, right? So we got the angular frequency is just two pi times the wave's frequency, right? So, um, so this is just, you could think of it just like a radians conversion, right? Of uh, your frequency. So this gets uh, the angular frequency expressed in terms of our wave's frequency. And the wave velocity is just going to be equal to the wavelength times the frequency, right? So lambda nu, right? So you can kind of remember this one just from thinking about electromagnetic radiation, right? The speed of light is equal to lambda times the frequency. For any general wave, the same thing is true. It's wave, the speed of that wave is going to be equal to lambda times the frequency. Okay, so let's plug these guys in. So we're going to plug in these definitions for the angular frequency and the velocity into our uh, classical wave equation, right? So we got this second derivative just kind of coming along for the ride here. Plus, um, if we substitute this definition for the angular frequency, then we'll end up with four pi squared new squared and for if we plug in this for the wave velocity then we end up with lambda squared new squared right and then this spatial function psi of x comes along for the ride all this stuff is still equal to zero okay so we get a little cancellation here right these frequencies will cancel out those are gone and so when we do that right we just end up with the wavelength in the denominator. So plus four pi squared over lambda squared psi x. Right, so now what I wanna do here, we have a, a wave equation, right? This is just classical wave equation. What I wanna do is use de Broglie's relationship, which accounts for the wave particle duality in order to re-express lambda, right? Remember, de Broglie's relationship assumes that every moving particle has a wavelength. So if we plug that in here, then we include that wave particle duality into this wave equation. So let's do that, right? So recall de Broglie's relationship. Right, so de Broglie's relationship says that lambda is equal to h over rho, where rho is the momentum, right? So this is the momentum of your moving particle, and h is Planck's constant. Right, so again, this says that any moving particle, any particle with the momentum rho is going to have an, in, um, an intrinsic wavelength, right? So if we plug this guy in, right? So let's plug in here. So we plug in the wavelength from the de Broglie relationship, then we get the following, right? So we get the second derivative, again, just coming along for the ride here. Plus, now we'll have four pi squared 
rho squared over uh, h squared times psi of x is equal to zero, right? So now we have a wave equation that is, you know, built up from classical theory, just a classical wave equation. Now it includes the momentum of a moving particle thanks to the de Broglie relationship, right? So, um, so now we have an equation that intrinsically includes this wave particle duality, right? So, this is nice. We have something that includes the motion of a, of a moving uh, quantum particle. However, what we want to do here is build this up so that we can define the energy of that particle. We have this that just defines the motion. Great. Uh, but we want something that defines the energy. We can use the relationship of the momentum to the total energy of the particle in order to do that. So let's do that. So recall that the total energy Recall that energy, right? If we if we want to get the total energy of some particle, right, um, it's going to be a sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy contributions, right? Ke plus Pe in this case, right? Kinetic energy plus potential energy. Now, the kinetic energy of the particle is intrinsically related to its momentum, right? Because kinetic energy is the energy associated with motion, right? So, um, so that's going to be momentum squared over 2m, right? This is your kinetic energy of the particle. Uh, and we'll just say that the potential energy can just be anything. We're going to call it V of X. This is just going to be your potential energy function. That's going to depend on the position of your particle, kinetic energy associated with motion, potential energy associated with position. This is going to give you your total energy. So doing a little bit of algebra here, we can isolate uh, the square of the momentum. That's just going to be E minus V of X times 2M. Right. So what I want to do now, now that we have this expression for the momentum squared, I'm going to take that guy and plug it in up here. Right, plug it in in this expression so that we have a wave equation that includes the energy of the particle. Right, so I'm going to go to a different slide here and pick a different color. So if we plug this guy in, right, so again, the second derivative just steadily coming along for the ride here dx squared plus 4 pi squared e minus V of X, our potential, right? Times 2M over H squared, right? Equals zero. Okay, so now we have an equation that includes the energy of the particle. So before we go to the next step, a little bit of a note on uh, Planck's constant. So there's a different way to uh, express Planck's constant that's called H bar. H bar is written like this, right? You have H with a bar over it, right? Kind of self-explanatory. It is Planck's constant, but it's Planck's constant divided by two pi, right? So in quantum mechanics applications, H bar is commonly used um, to get rid of a lot of these two pi terms that typically show up because of radian conversions from wave equations. So, uh, so we use H bar a lot and I'm going to use it here. So we're going to re-express, um, H or Planck's constant as H bar. So doing that step again, second derivative, just being left unchanged here. So when we do that, we end up with the following. So we have E minus V of X, all of that times 2M over H bar squared, right? Because this is related to 2 pi, you plug in 2 pi, it's going to be squared. So you got 4 pi squared. That cancels out with this guy up top, right? Okay. So we have the energy, right? We got um, everything we need. Uh, what I want to do is just rearrange this expression a little bit. Oh, wait, I dropped my psi of X somewhere. So all of this should be multiplied by psi of X and equal to zero. 
Okay, there we go. All right, so now we wanna just re-express this expression. What I wanna do is kinda isolate the energy, the total energy from the potential energy. Because what we want is an equation that can give us the total energy of a quantum particle, right? So, um, so what we wanna do is kind of isolate these terms. So I'm gonna first break apart this fraction here. So we're gonna, again, bring this second derivative along. Right, so we'll have this term for the total energy, which will be E times 2M over H bar squared times psi of X. And that'll be minus the potential energy times 2M over H bar squared psi of X. All of that's still going to be equal to zero. Okay. So I'm going to put the energy on the right hand side. So we'll have negative E, over e times 2M over H bar squared psi of X, right? And then all these other terms just come down. So we'll have this second derivative of psi of X over DX squared minus the potential. over h bar squared times psi of x. Okay, so um, now if we do a little bit of algebra here, right? So we're going to do a little bit of algebra to re-express this guy. Um, if we do some algebra here, then, so the reason why I'm doing the algebra here is I wanna isolate the potential and the total energy so that they're just their own terms multiplied by the wave function or by the spatial function in this case. So h bar squared over 2m my, uh, plus the potential times psi of x is equal to e psi of x. Right, so we've isolated the energy here. So this equation is the time independent Schrodinger equation, right? So this is the time independent Schrodinger equation. Right, and I'll probably abbreviate this a lot throughout the class as T-I-S-E, right? The time independent Schrodinger equation. Right, so this is the powerful equation that drives all of the quantum mechanics that you're going to learn in this course. When you look at it, right, this is again a second order differential equation. This is assuming just one dimension and in the next video we'll talk about how we handle different dimensions, multiple dimensions. Um, but you can break this equation down, right, this term gives you the total energy, right, so that E is related to the total energy of the particle this V of X, this is the potential energy term. So this is the potential energy, right? So this term out front is going to be your kinetic energy term. Right? And in the Schrodinger equation, psi of X is referred to as the wave function, right? So wave function, right? Just like we mentioned in the last video, keep in mind that waves are delocalized. So if we're treating the wave properties of particles, um, they have to have a delocalized position. The wave function um, is not going to give you a, a unique point in space that the particle's located at. It's going to give you a function that is related to its location, but accounts for the delocalization of the wave, right? So that's the, the wave function. So each of these pieces of Schrodinger's equation uh, denote the kinetic and potential energy contributions to the system and give you a powerful framework to calculate the total energy of the system, right? So you're going to be using this equation a lot. Um, different situations will have different 
kinetic and potential functions, right? So, um, so it's going to change depending on which situation you're looking at, right? But this is the foundation for what we're going to do in this course, the Schrodinger equation. Uh, so in the next video, we'll go through each of the components of Schrodinger's equation, kind of explain a little bit more uh, what each term means and how we can generalize it to multiple dimensions in different situations.